All right, so three, two, one. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy E, one half of the High Press Podcast, and I'm here with a special Special. guest. And when I mean special, I mean special. Like, he's retarded. Like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, nah, man. I'm here with my cousin Bijan, a.k.a. Young Turkish, a.k.a. Turkish Red, but he's not Turkish. What's going on, Bijan? Introduce yourself to the people, man. What's up? What's up, everybody? Glad to be here. What's good to the High Press Nation? Just uh, happy to talk some footy with everybody. What's going on? Yeah, man, you've been you've been trying to get on the um on the podcast for a little bit now. You know, um, I actually just you know upgraded my uh my equipment and shit. So now we're doing a Skype recording. I feel all like technical and all of that shit. <laughs> like, yo, this is popping right now. That's right, man. I'm just trying to trying to talk footy whenever I can. I feel you, bro. I feel you, bro. So, um, so yeah, uh, normally my, my other co-host, Mark, shout out to Mark and shit, you know, um, it's been real crazy with our schedules and, you know, shit is going on in both of our lives. It's just, we can't, uh, link up as much as we want to. So I asked my cousin Bijan to join me on the podcast today because he's a big Liverpool fan. Boo! Boo! Let's go walk on, walk on fucking cop I anyway <laughs> but um so yeah so uh so so be so you know tell us a little bit about your, your your soccer background yeah you know uh the game is uh it's a beautiful game it's been uh it's been with me since I was little I've been playing since I was four years old uh you know pretty much up until till now and uh got in, got involved in some coaching a few years back got a chance to to coach at the high school varsity level and okay, you know, okay, and de- all right. Develop some of the youngins in the JV ranks as well and bring them up to the varsity level. So you know it was cool. I got to play and you know enjoy the game from a player's aspect, but also you know also get into the the coaching aspect as well to bring in a a tactical level and a new appreciation for the game. So you know it's uh it's uh it's a it's a been a long love affair with the game for me for sure. I hear that. So what um what position did you play or primarily play? I primarily played defense, but uh, you know, my younger years I also dabbled in in offense. But uh yeah, I was uh primarily defender in the in the American soccer system. They have uh what's called the sweeper, and that's uh mostly what I played. Because you're slow and shit, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's pretty much <laughs> no, what it is. actually no, actually the sweeper <laughs> needs to be really fast because uh we're the last guy back, so in the American system, they, they really have to keep up with the striker. So, you know, if you're any defender gets beat, you got to be the last man. So I was actually there because I was really fast, believe it or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at you toting your own horn, all right? I just couldn't, I just couldn't finish for shit. That's why I didn't play striker. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So um, I'm assuming you got a love for soccer from your, your father? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, my father, we... uh used to watch all the games together growing when I was younger. He was mostly into the, the international game scene, you know, like the World Cup, Euro Cups. But, shout out uh, to Ressa, man. Yeah, shout out to, to Big Rez. Shout out to Mr. <laughs> Malecki, Mr. That's, Malachi. Word that's up. right. Word up. But, um, yeah, so uh, so so you you played all throughout, you know, your, your growing up stages. You played in high school. Um, you stopped at the college level. You did some coaching. Now, um, what got you into being a Liverpool fan, fucking bum? <laughs> Liverpool is uh, – it's, it's a great club, man. Their fans are – their fans are passionate, but um, – They're assholes, honestly, too. I, I, <laughs> yeah, that they are. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. Honestly, I started out like an Arsenal, believe it or not. I was uh, oh. uh, Henri was my guy. Thierry, right? Yeah, Thierry yeah, Henry. Henri was he was something else, man. So I actually mostly watched Arsenal games when I could back in the day because, well, you know, I was watching Henri. But then, um, yeah, I, I saw Liverpool and uh, Arsenal playing the FA Cup, and ooh, Liverpool really, really, really won me over. And uh, that Steven Gerrard, he was a young and um, in the midfield those days, but, uh, yeah, just watching them play, watching the fans sing and like seeing their passion. I was like, okay, who's this team? And then my boy was already a big Liverpool fan. So I don't know. We just kind of, kind of started following Liverpool from there and it just, just took off. And, you know, I've been ever since like 2000, I've been a Liverpool fan. 
So how many times, uh, you know, full disclosure, I'm a Toffee supporter, so I'm Blue Mergy side, he's Red Mergy side. How many <laughs> times have you tried to recruit me to the dark side? Many, many times. <laughs> many <laughs> and times. has it worked? It, um, yes, it has not worked yet, but uh, uh, one day almost, it, will, though, it will. Almost, yeah. I'm fucking, yeah. I'm fucking up to here with Everton, boy. I'm, yeah, if I'm counting on Everton, it definitely will happen. Yeah, day. exactly. <laughs> I, I might, I might make that switch. So, you know, <laughs> to the other uh, Merseyside team. Matter of fact, yo, yo, did you did you watch that that video um, on like on like the uh, the splitting of Everton FC and and Liverpool? It was pretty dope, right? The splitting of the, of the clubs when you mean when they first started. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because I, I, I um, I actually didn't know that Everton actually played where Liverpool played first before Liverpool was even a club. I had no idea. That's yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy to think that Everton was around longer came, than around Liverpool. before Liverpool. Yeah, yeah and they're and they're like. God knows how many other clubs that were around since like the eighteen seventies and shit, like. Yeah, we game has been around for a while, man. Yeah, man. we started in like 1872. <laughs> one thing I say about Everton, we've we're like one of, of only four teams I think that have never been relegated to the championship. So that's like yeah, that's, our one pride and joy. We've been in, in the Premier League forever, literally forever. We've never went down. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, Everton get a lot of slack, but um, they're uh, they're a solid Premier League club for sure. No, you can't. Can't doubt that. They spend money and it doesn't always work out, but, you know, they... Hey, staying in the Premier League as long as they have, you got to give it to them. Yeah, now, and now we're, we're not even Everton. We're basically Barcelona B right now, basically. <laughs> fucking, we got like eight fucking Barcelona players and shit, but... Anyway, enough about Everton, enough about... I see, matter of fact, one more thing before we get into the games. I, I wanted to say, I wanted to apologize to you because when we was younger, <laughs> I was really mean. I would always fuck with you and really right. shit on you for being a soccer player. Like, I've always tried to recruit you to the dark side to play football with us, and you just never did. So, one, I can I congratulate you for sticking with the sport. <laughs> and two, m- my apologies, bro. I'm yeah, sorry, man. man. You know what I mean? It's just all good, man. I always knew it was always about football, you know? So Right. The, the football <laughs> with the U and not two O's, that's, man. That's right. It's, it's the, the game would – I knew the – the, it, the world loves the game, you know, it's like, you know, it's Trevor Noah said something interesting one time. It was like um, a Super Bowl. How many people watch the Super Bowl? Like like 30 million. million. Yeah. Or some crazy. Um, but he said uh, but Barcelona versus Real Madrid. One billion people watch that game. Jesus. That's crazy. Like Jesus. that amount is just insane. The World Cup gets billions, like you know. Yeah, it's it's the world comes together for that. For that Shit is one bugged game. out. Like it, it, it's crazy. It's it's incomprehensible at times. You know, at first I, you know, I've I've said on a podcast I didn't have a big love for soccer. I got into it around 2010, but now I'm hooked. Like we literally text every day. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I'm 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 in New York. Uh, Bijan is from New York, but you you recently moved to Chicago, so we don't get to see each other that much. So you know, when we do talk, it's usually through text or, or phone calls or whatever. But anyway, it's just crazy that I used to make fun of you for playing soccer, and now you're on my soccer podcast. Don't figure, <laughs> right? Yeah, the, the irony is. Is, is hilarious on many levels. <laughs> Matter of fact, I have another question before we get into it. Since this is high press podcast, right? You also are an aficionado of the greenery. Um, oh yeah. Do you remember your first time getting high? Oh, first time getting high. Um, yeah, I was in like. I was like 16. It was on Halloween. Halloween high. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, it was pretty freaky. But um, I think I was more sick than high. But I was definitely tripping a little bit. But. <laughs> Nigga said he yeah, smoked Halloween on Halloween. High. Shit. Now, yo, I remember my first time was me and this nigga Phil Joyo. Shout out to Dub. We rolled up in a fucking uh, brown paper bag because we didn't, you know, we didn't have any like papers to roll up in. Yo, I almost died. I almost didn't smoke anymore after that because it was just so much chemicals. Like, I'm probably going to get cancer from that one day. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I smoked a blunt my first time. Well, oh, okay. I smoked you smoked a blunt, blunt on Halloween. But I was coughing like 
crazy. Oh, yeah. I, I think I, I think I threw up. Yeah, I definitely. Threw up. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah. I'm supposed to exactly I'm right now. Ooh. Yep. I'm about to throw up right now. Um, but now both of us lean more towards the um the oils now, right? Um, yes, yes, but I've recently gotten back into uh the buds and uh, the bud, okay, you back? I'm I'm happy about that that decision. That's what's up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not a lot, man. All right, but yo, let's let's get to you know, let's get to why we here to talk some soccer, talk some Champions League, and um I guess since you, since you're a Liverpool fan, let's start with uh Liverpool Bayern Munich 0-0. Zero, zero. What were your thoughts? Go ahead. Uh, my thoughts, um, number one, thank God we did not concede. Right. That's number one. I'm With Fabinho and Matip as our two center backs to not concede against Bayern, pretty impressive. I must say, shout out, shout out to, to Matip and Fabinho for yo for fa- yo Fabinho played his ass off man yo, yo he yeah. yo that um that one goal where where uh, where they, they played in uh, Rob Lewandowski and he couldn't get it out his foot if um if fucking Matip didn't touch that that could have been a goal bro oh I mean definitely um yeah I mean they were they were they were huge they were immense without Big Verge um. I must say, I was very, I was impressed. I was very nervous, but I was very impressed with with those guys. That was definitely my number one takeaway: is that the fact that they didn't concede any goals was was impressive. Now Van Dyke will be back for the second leg, right? Yes, yes. Thank God. We need Virgil. It, you know, it it shows that when Virgil's not in there, it it shows Liverpool's defense were. They got the job done, but it wasn't not convincing as it, it was definitely it a, a little shaky, right? It was a little shaky at times. For sure, yeah. And I mean Robertson was great today. I mean, on on the defensive side though, he, he was a liability today. Mm. That, that made me, Talk that made me about not it. comfortable. If Virgil was in, I would would not have been worried so much. I don't want to say in the least bit, it was still a little worrying, but it would it would have been easy, but you know you don't have that cover there, so you know that's why we got that cross in early in like the the early half of the part of the game. You know, Gnabry got that uh, that cross in that was deflected and then just bounced off Allison. So yeah, that yeah. was that that was actually one of my 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 talking points I had. Serge Gnabry was giving y'all that work. Oh yeah. Big time. Yo, 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 did yo, did you see that step over move to the touchline mm-hmm. that he did on Robinson to put that um that cross in? I was like, oh my god. Matter yeah. of fact, he, he's on he's on my my FIFA ultimate team and shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I got surged. <laughs> but yeah, in so FIFA, nice. they have him in FIFA, they have him on the left in the in the game he played on the right side. So whatever. Oh. But I'm um, all right. So what 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 else besides uh <laughs> shout, Fabinho, shout besides out to Robert, Arsenal. Shout out to Arsenal for selling Serge Gnabry for five million pounds. Yeah, that was smart. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now they, he's they worth sort of business what? there. Now he's worth what? 60, 70? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. In this market, yeah. In today's market, you never know, right? A buck twenty and shit. <laughs> for real. One thing, uh, one thing that I, I had um and that you had had mentioned this shit. Sadio Mane was was pretty poor, man. He uh he wasn't that good today. And you had you had a great like quote that that you told me. Tell tell the yeah. fans what you said. Sadio Mane, um, I, I don't understand how a player can be so good yet so awful at the same time. <laughs> like he, in the same play too, in like the same fluid motion, he will do something that'll That'll amaze you all you your jaw is on the floor and then the next moment your jaw is still on the floor but for the opposite reason just i, I don't i don't understand understand him at all he frustrates me to no end um he he's my favorite that being said he's my favorite liverpool player <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting uh, <laughs> interesting interesting so it's definitely a love hate thing with Sadio yeah, Mane. 100 percent and I, I I was I was seeing that I'm like cause yeah like yo he had like three or four clear chances bro to score clear. and clear. he he hit all of them shits wide I was like yo this nigga must be hot he does this all <laughs> the time though this is like all the time he does this every game he probably has three chance 
three where like you're just like how did he not score there he'll like it's just in today's game you know he had this beautiful he had the ball beautiful pace was nice dribbled by a few Bayern defenders was fighting some guys off and then just takes a shot that just completely misses the net like what are you doing you know at least get it on target don't even get me started on that wide open <laughs> that wide open Oh man, I mean, I understand his body was it was turning, it was hard, but I mean, he looked up, he turned, and then yo, then just, yo, then uh, yo, then he tried to do that bicycle kick and shit that looked mad crazy. That is a p- perfect example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> of form, my name. Yeah. He got the height was beautiful, the form was beautiful, the end product was, I, I don't know. So basically, he's the Senegalese version of Olivier Giroud. Um, yes and no. He's definitely <laughs> better than Zulu. better than Giroud for right. sure. A um, lot of people. You're probably yeah. better than Olivier Giroud, and you haven't <laughs> played in ten years. So yeah, I mean Giroud scores some golasos. That's for sure. Mane yeah. Mane can score golasos too, but yeah, he has. He has. Yeah. These are all all he all today. Every shot that he took, or at least two of them that he took, were on his left foot. He's not even a lefty, but all the golasos that he scores are also from his left foot. So he's just an anomaly. Like he, <laughs> he's an anomaly. He's, he's Sadio Mane. Shout he's, out he's to Mane. Mane. He's Mane. Shout he's amazing, Mane. but he's uh, he's also baffling. Yeah, time. that that like when when you text me that that was pretty uh, pretty interesting. So I I have some stats. So um the possession was uh, fairly even. It was fifty one percent Byron, forty nine percent Liverpool. But the shots on target were mostly um Liverpool. It was matter of fact, hold on, that's Jacks playing with his toy. <laughs> Jax. Give me the ball, Jax. You can't play with this right now. We're doing the podcast, nigga. You trying to fuck shit up. Shout out to Jax. But um, so yeah, so it was 51-49 Byron, and uh the shots were 15 for Liverpool, only two on target. Byron had nine shots, but they didn't get any on target. So that kind of yeah. tells you what kind of game it was. Yeah, like it was bad. it was weird because it was a good game, though. Like it was wide open, like the play was good you know the 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 layoffs between teammates on both sides were good they were getting chances but i don't know it just like you know it just didn't really do anything one guy that um uh, impressed me though was was jordan henderson and i wanted to ask you i think jordan henderson is really good but why do so many liverpool fans fucking despise jordan henderson what did he do to y'all i'm jordan henderson i'm I'm in the Jordan. I'm the in the pro Jordan Henderson camp. You're pro Jordan Henderson. Yeah, okay. I there's. I think the people that don't appreciate Jordan Henderson don't really know what they're talking about, or don't right. know what don't. Not I wouldn't necessarily don't know what they're talking about, but they don't understand maybe what his role is on the team. Like, what are they expecting from Jordan Henderson? Like, I want to ask somebody who thinks Jordan Henderson sucks. Like, what do you expect him to do then, you know? Right, because like, he's, I think he's, he's, he's not going to score goals. He's, no, he's not that guy. I mean, yeah. in the beginning of his career, he was. But, you know, in the beginning of my career, I was also a forward. And I, right. you know, and then I clearly was like, no, I'm better at defense. But, no, um, he's not going to score goals. No, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing and what he's asked to be doing. And he's doing it very well. I mean, yeah, he yo, he he was over there. He was bossing the midfield. He was spraying passes around every pass he hit. I um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but but I bet you if I look up his pass accuracy, it was at least eighty percent. You know what I'm saying? Closer yeah. to the nineties, probably. Like he, he was hitting on everything, and he's I, a super it's just passer. People just hate on Jordan Henderson, and like he's the captain too. Like you're not supposed mm-hmm. to hate the fucking captain. Jesus Christ, Liverpool, get yourself yeah. the captain, man. I mean, I understand. I can see it sometimes. You know, they, they want more because we have so many exciting players. You got Mo, you got Mane, Firmino, you have these guys that like, you know, we have exciting guys up top. And Henderson, they he's not really promoting that offense, so to speak. But that again is not his job. He's he's a recycler of the possession. He he's gonna win that ball back when we lose it. He's gonna he's gonna hunt someone down from Liverpool from attacking down into our end in the box. Right, like, right. He's going to do, uh, do that work that nobody else is going to do. 
and that's why Jordan Henderson is crucial. I mean, yeah, you need somebody else to play defense yeah. besides fucking Virgil Van Dyke. Yeah, exactly. Not everybody's <laughs> exactly, and not everybody's gonna be uh, on the team. Can be Mo, Mo Salah, the scoring goals, and Firmino and Mane. Like, not everybody can be that. You know, they, we need somebody to do the dirty work, and Henderson loves doing the dirty work and he thrives off doing the dirty work. So Right. Like if you that's why if, he's the captain. If you if you look at the the best teams, you know Pep has the guy that does the dirty work, Fernandinho. You know, Barcelona mm-hmm. has has guys like uh like Sergio Busquets and yep. Real Madrid got, you know, Tony Cruz. You know what I'm saying? These type of players are necessary if you want to get to, you know, the Champions League, you know, title levels and to win the Premier League and shit. Like, you need somebody like Jordan Henderson. I just think it's funny that, you know, people always talk shit about him. I talk shit about him, but I'm a fucking Everton fan, so I'm supposed to talk shit about him. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) he's not not without his flaws, for sure. And there's, there's, you know, some games where maybe he shouldn't be starting, but Honestly, Henderson is, is is a crucial part of our team, and and nine times out of ten, I want him in that lineup. Yeah, definitely. So, um, all, also another thing that I saw about the game is that you guys were pressing really hot, and um, yeah, and you and when you texted me, you had you had mentioned you were like, yo, that, that press is godly right now. Yeah, yeah, the press was great in the first half. I mean, Klopp was um, he knows he he knows how to to play to play against Munich. I mean, what's their their weakness in the Bundesliga has always been Dortmund, and why? Because Klopp's press was what revived Dortmund. So, you know, they obviously have trouble against the press. I mean, Liverpool just couldn't finish today. I think Liverpool could have scored three, four goals today. Easily. You know, if our, Easily. If our finishing was on point, we we would have – we should Liber, – honestly, Liverpool should have come away at the end of the day with a win in Anfield going into the Allianz. Up, right. up in this leg, but you know that's the game. But the press was there; it looked beautiful in the first half. You know, everyone was hitting their triggers. Um, it was really up high. But also, I think Bayern was kind of um inviting the press a little more. They too. were. They, they, they yeah, were they really were. far back. Like Ma- matter of that fact, surprised me a little bit. Matter of fact, they had um they they there was like a, a couple goal kicks where they they had Joshua Kimmich stay like by the corner flag. So yeah. so 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 just in case Neuer couldn't get it up the middle, he'd swing it out to to Kimmich, and then Kimmich would either go along with it or give it back to to Neuer so he could reset it. That was yes. definitely a, a a little wrinkle that uh that that and uh, Nico Kovac put in there. Matter of fact, I had said something on Twitter. I'm like, yo, doesn't Nico Kovac look like every bad guy from from the Liam Neeson movie? <laughs> yeah, he does. He really does. <laughs> like, he looks it, like it, the villain. Yo, yeah, it you know, it looks like you'd call him on the phone and he'd be like, I have your daughter and you can do yeah. nothing about it, and click this shit like, yo, mm-hmm. and the Allianz Stadium with that red, like dome that it is just looks like the villain's lair and everything <laughs> so i mean so so what, what do you what do you think is going to happen in the in the you know the second leg no bias obviously you're a liverpool fan so you're yeah. going to be liverpool do you think that you guys can do enough because really it's zero zero if you go over to um to byron and score a goal even if it's tied you guys win on away goal so yep. it's really a good result for liverpool yeah i mean and the fact I- that they played so well one hundred percent. I think you know. I I'm upset Liverpool didn't win, but tactically it's it's a solid result. We didn't concede at home. It's zero zero. Now we go with everything to play for. Yeah, we're away, but I honestly think that we were the better team today, and I think we're a better team than Bayern. For that hand right. across the board, like I think we're just a better team than them. We have players. We have an answer to every one of their answers. Like. Like Lewandowski, where was he today? He was he absolutely was, yeah, he, he nowhere. Was, he was and nowhere. we didn't even have Van Dyke on him. Like, it was Matip and Fabinho. They were nice, but, again, you're Lewandowski. He's, like, supposed to be the best striker in the world. And James, non-existent. You know, Thiago had a pretty nice game. But, again, you know, it's – everything they had really came from those – the wing, really. And it was Joshua Gnabry Kimmich, side. Yeah, yeah. So Joshua I, Kimmich, Gnabry with, with the yep. overlap on – on 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 the other side, what's the um what's the the left back's name? I forgot. Um, Alaba. Alaba's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah Alaba he was, was open too. You no, know, he's gonna do. Alaba's gonna do what he does. But um, Kimmich won't be in the next leg. So you know, Rafinha. Yeah, that was I'm big. Not yeah, too worried about Rafinha. Wow. Yeah, he'll, I forgot know, about Rafinha. that. Yeah, so they're gonna be out. Kimmich. Kimmich had a great game today. So that's gonna be a loss for them. 
I think we'll have a little answer for um, Gnabry on the wing. Uh, I don't expect Robertson to have as bad of a game next game around, but who knows? The next game is in like a month, so. Yeah, you know, right. I, you never know. I think I think Robertson won't have as bad of a game. Um, so I think I, I I like I like Liverpool's chances. You know, Van Dyke's gonna be back. Uh, I think it'll give Kate some more time to just understand. You know, his the team around him more, and he had a he had a really good game today. I thought so. Um, he's just gonna build off that. So I really like Liverpool's chances based off what I saw today. I think they can. Um, I think they can win for sure. Yeah, I I definitely give them give them a shot. I'm going over there, especially just like I said. Even if they score one one goal, and it's one one, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got it. Y'all good. So I definitely think. But you know, like you say, you never know, man. Injuries can happen. You know, in in three weeks, who knows what could happen? So yeah. you know, it is what it is. But that should be a definitely a, a good game. Matter of fact, let's jump to the other game that happened today. We both didn't watch it because obviously we were watching the Liverpool game. But you know, we checked a couple highlights and all of that. We'll just talk on it real quick. Barcelona versus Lyon, another zero zero game. Yeah. Um, I was thinking Barca was going to take that for sure. I'm sure, you know, just as everyone else did. But, uh, you know, shout out to Leon for, for holding down their, their house, you know, keeping their I mean, fort. yo, yo, Leon is a, is, a, is a sneaky underrated team, yo. They got um, uh, Fakir, Dembele, uh, Depay, Bertrand Traore. Like, you know, they got they got guys that have, you know, done things in, in, in world football. They actually just sold um, Mar- uh, Mariano earlier this year to um to to what you call it, the Real Madrid. Mm. Um, to me, I, I kind of watch, watch the highlights. Uh, basically, it was it was mostly just Barcelona with possession. They had sixty three possessions to Leon thirty seven. But I mean, everybody kind of expected that, right? That's what Barcelona yeah. does. One stat that stood out to me though was Barcelona got twenty five shots off versus Leon. Leon only had five. Mm. That's crazy. So Barcelona was fucking peppering that shit. Matter of fact, I I had I saw on Twitter that a lot of people's man of the match was um was the the Leon goalie. Yo, he had five saves. Right. And, yo, yeah, he had he had shit coming at him all fucking day from from Messi and Suarez and and all them dudes. Um, I kind of watched the highlights. There was a couple chances like uh um. <laughs> A uh, couple in the first half for Lyon. Um, there, there, there was a volley attempt. I think one guy hit the post. Uh, Barcelona had one too. Ser- Sergio Busquets. He hit a shot from like the top of the box that looked like it was gonna go in, but it deflected off a defender and went out. If it didn't take that deflection, I think that ball was was, was definitely going in. And then if Barcelona are up one zero, you know who knows how that game you know changes. Mm-hmm. So it was like you know it was it was some shit. I mean, but I don't know you you didn't see the games, and I, I don't know how much La La Liga you watch. I mean, Barcelona are kind of cruising, but you know they don't. I don't know they don't seem like as unbeatable as they normally do. Like yeah, I, you know, I haven't really been watching La Liga really at all this season, but um, I have been you know reading some articles here and there coming out of you know Barca and Madrid and. And yeah, I mean, I guess Barca's, I guess La Liga's kind of bluff this year, right? Because Madrid yeah, is not doing you know, well at all, and well, Barca they're, is just cruising. You know, they're like third saying. place. I mean, but you know, you already know what what La Liga is. It's Barcelona, Madrid, and um, and and you know, and and then the other Madrid team. That's it. It's a three horse race. It just depends on who's top, and that just switches pretty much every year. You know. Mm, yeah. Plus, yeah, yeah that's how well, that plus also o- over here in in the U.S. Um, I I used to get La Liga games on on my cable box, but now they switch the channel and shit. So I don't I don't even get the games. I only get my regular package, and um, so that that's that's like the journey. Games and then I, I get the ESPN Plus, so I get like Syria A and the mm-hmm. championship. So I've been watching a lot of Syria A this year and a lot of Germany games. All right, all right. One uh one other thing I I did want to ask you about um about your boy Liverpool ex Liverpool. F- Philippe Coutinho. Um, a lot of rumors going around that he's not enjoying his time at, at Barca. Like, how do you feel about that? Are you happy that he's doing bad? Or do you feel bad for him? Like, uh, I'm just going to... I have one thing really to say about this. 
Rivers, and that's Cry right. a fucking River Coutinho. Oh, Cry you a River. Okay, so <laughs> basically, you don't. That's give a fuck. what you get. That is what you get. I'm not saying I wish that on you, because once you leave Liverpool, fuck you. But that is what you get, dude. You wanted to kick up a little bitch fest on your way out. And, you know, life was good in Liverpool. You were the king. People were singing your name. And you wanted to create a little bitch fest. And look what you get now. All, and he could have just left at the, in the summertime, and everybody would have loved. He was still been a god at Liverpool, right? And yeah, he wanted. He had to leave in the winter time. It's it's definitely harder because like you're leaving like mid season, you know. So it's hard to to get accustomed to like the new tactics and, sh- and shit like that. Um, yeah. you, know. you know, but, but that's, you know, it's not. You know, I guess the grass isn't always greener, is what I could say to to right. everyone. Just because. Just because you're a Brazilian or a South American doesn't mean you have to play at Barcelona around. But see, but that's what it is. That's the culture, bro. Like, that's That's what what I'm saying. That's what they grow up. So for them, for Coutinho, a kid growing up in Brazil, all of his his idols either played for Barcelona or Real Madrid or both, to be honest with you, right? You know what I'm saying? So, like. Fuck him, he's a follower. Why can't he be his own person? <laughs> see, I thought we were going to get a little bit unbiased take here on the High Press Podcast, but I see that's not going to happen. <laughs> nah, you know, I understand it. Like, I'm not mad at him for wanting to go to Barcelona. And Like I said, if he would have left in the summertime or at, before the season started, then, you know, whatever, then fine. That's, I understand. You wanted to go to Barcelona. Fine. But to create injuries and go into the season after having just signed a contract and telling right, a brand new you contract. love staying in Liverpool, like, fuck you, dude. Like, so, that's, so that's how I feel about you. Basically, what happens was he he got a little famous. He, he found a hot girl. He dumped his girlfriend for him. And then the hot girl ended up dumping him, too. That's yeah. basically what happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Coutinho, I mean... It's, it's I mean He's 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 still young though. He he'll he'll, he'll turn it Coutinho's around. Coutinho's nice. You know? Coutinho's amazing. Yeah. Like there's no doubt. He's just you know he it's probably you know he's getting accustomed to 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 playing with Messi and playing on Barca. Coutinho's an amazing player. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm just I don't think Liverpool misses him to be honest with you. And that's right. and that's coming. That's an unbiased opinion really because you know we made it to the Champions League final without him. We're you know, fighting for the champion, the, the league title right now without him. So I don't think there's any really, there's no love loss really on um, on Liverpool's side. I would just say it was uh, it was not cool how he went about it. Yeah. You know, look at Suarez. Uh, Suarez kicked the Suarez. You know, left too, and even Suarez tried to create a little stir, but he apologized, put his head down, and played like a beast, and then left. All was forgiven. He's Liverpool fans love him. And and then he started biting people like right in the middle of all that. Still, they still love him though. <laughs> <laughs> they still love him. That crazy fuck, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> that crazy fuck, fucking Suarez. Yo, Liverpool, like anybody. Yo, Liverpool always got these uh, these weirdos. They have fucking Colo Torre, my my man Francois, right? Yeah, Colo. Shout out to <laughs> Torre. Shout out to Colo Torre and Francois. Matter of fact, uh, some some people might not know that story and shit. Actually, Bijan told me the story that Colo Torre, when when he was playing uh, for Liverpool, he you know he was married and all that, and then um he had a a wag. He had you know a, a little little side piece, and um he told her that he was a car salesman named Francois. <laughs> so the whole time this bitch was thinking that she was fucking with a dude named Francois who's a car salesman and then one day her homegirl was watching a Liverpool game and they closed up on on Colo Torre and like she took a picture and was like yo um is is this Francois and then the girl is like wow they look just alike she's like his name is Colo Torre and he's a fucking superstar player and shit <laughs> I was like, yo, I, Colo yeah. Torre has been my man ever since you told me that story. I think, and don't don't quote me on this for sure. but It, I, it, it doesn't matter. We're, we're fucking pies. We don't fact check. But I'm pretty sure that Colo Torre, after she confronted him, tried to tell her that that was his twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> so he tried to continue to lie, right? Deny, deny, deny. Man, if you're listening to this, deny, deny, deny. 
Yeah, Even if Col- you're caught, it doesn't matter. Hey, Listen man, to Col- Colo. Polo Torre is the only man to ever be a part of two undefeated seasons. So he's really? he must be doing something right. So and and he fucking slid tackled the Arsene Wenger during training and got away with it. The man gives no fucks. <laughs> he's, he's unapologetically himself. Oh man, shout out. But yeah, and anyway, so um so Barca and Leon, yeah, basically it was a zero zero game. Um they're 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 gonna go back uh to Barcelona. So I'm pretty sure that Barca is gonna take this. They probably win two zero at home and then uh, yeah. it's on definitely. I would I, say you could bet the house on that one. Right, right, right. But then again, you know, who knows, you know, but whatever. Matter of fact, speaking of betting the house, you guys, if you guys do bet soccer, you should definitely follow us at high press pod 420 on twitter for all of my 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 soccer picks i actually been doing it for like the past week i think i'm 34 wins 12 losses and like six pushes so you know i'm kind of y'all should definitely rock with me matter of fact somebody uh somebody hit me up on twitter today um said uh my my picks won them a hundred and like 83 dollars over the weekend so shout out you know shout out to us that you know, okay, okay. Getting these picks out here, and it's because I'm a degenerate gambler, so I'm already researching these games. So for <laughs> for, for my betting purposes, so I figure I might as well, you know, tra- translate out to the fans that fuck with the podcast and all that, showing y'all love. Y'all could get a little money from watching soccer, you know. So follow us, man. High press pod four twenty. Um. Anyway, so uh, now there's two other uh, Champions League matches tomorrow. Uh, Juve versus Atletico Madrid and Man City versus uh, Schalke. Oh, With yeah. Juve, um, let me see. I, I got a couple uh stats here and shit. Uh, Juve have won three of of the last five, but um, Atletico Madrid have also won the last uh three or five. They did lose to Real though. Um. So you know you can kind of compare there. I say Juve wins that. Uh, I mean, that's a tough one. That's a tough one for me. Um, Atleti is at home. So right. they, they do tend to protect their house pretty well. I think defensively, they're going to be strong. That's what Atleti does. I wouldn't be surprised if this one was went back, you know, nil-nil to, um, to back to Juventus or to Reno. Yeah, um, I mean, that definitely. I just think, I just think that that uh, that quality is gonna win out. That Juve team is stacked, bro. Their their bench is like starters in Champions League. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this is crazy. Yeah, that Juve team is. They're built. Bro, they're they built have for this run, right? They have they pa- like they them. have Pablo DiBala on the bench, bro. Like he don't be starting. Like that's crazy. Like two two years ago, everybody was saying he's gonna be the next Lionel Messi. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he he was even last year. He was, you know, I don't know. He's nice. He, yeah. He's nice. He's nice. But um, you know, that's what happens when Cristiano Ronaldo comes to town. You know? Oh, talk that goat shit. Talk you know, that goat shit. I I was reading. Um, I read an article today where they uh they quoted Bonucci on uh, Cristiano Ronaldo yep. and 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 Bonucci just uh he just had to to give his hats his respect to um. To, to Ronaldo about his the way the he man said, trains. Yeah, yeah he the said dude he, is like what thirty three years old. Why are you training like that still? You are possessed. Oh. The man is he's not human. Really, is what it comes down to. I mean, I think the exact quote was, "He's a machine." I think that's what he yeah. said. <laughs> he, I mean, he is. <laughs> you, a- you have to be. I mean, there's also that story with Isco back in the day when Isco like was a young it was a youngin at the Madrid, and he he thought he was coming in super early. The first on the field to impress all the coaches and everybody, and there, there Ronaldo was already on the pitch, like kicking the ball around. He estimated Ronaldo was probably there for like an hour before him already. <laughs> already, it was probably and like Ronaldo 20. had already won his Champions Leagues. One, he was coming off of a FIFA Player of the Year, like a Ballon d'Or. I mean, like the guy is. He's the greatest, bro. That's why he's my guy, man. That's why he's my yeah. guy. I used to, I used to be one of, I used to be a major, major Ronaldo, Ronaldo hater. hater. Yeah, major. you definitely did. One hundred percent. I hated I everything that. he did. Ronaldo, this, Ronaldo, that. Oh, he's good. He's he's good, but he's not that good. Well, I still don't think he's better than Messi because right. I think Messi's the goat. One hundred percent. Any generation, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Ronaldo is. You got to respect the man for for his work ethic and the way he goes about his craft. I mean. The guy is 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 brilliant, really. 
Fucking but, yeah. Jay, you know he he's he came to to the uh, Serie A. He's leading the league in goals. <laughs> like he does he doesn't miss a beat, and that's why I think Juve. Um, you know, like you said, it may it may go you know zero zero or maybe you know one zero whatever. It's probably going to be a low scoring game, but I, I think Juve um is just stronger than uh, yeah and, Madrid. yeah Juve's yeah like Juve's built for this run. Yeah. I mean the defense is Bonucci, Chiellini, like these guys, like <laughs> these guys. <laughs> are amazing these guys just, are like the professors look, of defense just so. put it this way they got to the champions league final last year and added ronaldo or two years ago yeah two two years ago you know what i'm saying yeah, like I mean, so they already the they're team. already there yeah. it's the same team you know and the reason they didn't get to it was last because year ronaldo, was ronaldo. <laughs> yeah so, and they, they, i guess they added that piece to the puzzle um yeah, no, all across the board, they're 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 great. Shout out to Emre Jean, you know my uh, Liverpool boy. Liverpool, yeah, yeah, he's he, he's actually been, been been playing well this year. Um, he's, Emre's good. Yeah, Emre's yeah, good he's player. been playing really well over there. He 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 fits in really nice. He was he always fits. gonna fit into that system very nice. The the Italian league, I think, is a more more suiting to his his type of play. He's a very yeah. physical player. He's quick, he's but he's not like that. He's he's like. I don't know. He's like he's he has a his speed is is sneaky. Like he's not fast, but he, he kind of is. Like out of nowhere, he's just there. But um, no, Emre's Emre is good for the Italian league. I always thought he was gonna do well there. Um, he played pretty well for Liverpool. He was a starter for us for like two years. So I mean, the dude is uh, I'm happy for him. I'm I'm glad he's doing well there. But yeah, I think Juve's gonna win. Yeah, do you do the, the, the overall tie? Yeah. And then we got a uh, Man City ver- versus Schalke. I'm um, pretty much like I love Schalke. You know that's like that's one of my that's one of my my go to teams in, in Germany. Even like back in the day, because you know Jermaine Jones was on the the United States national team and mm. he was over there. But now they they have um. Weston McKinney, they got Haji Wright, and they're playing like McKinney every day. So I always try to check Schalke games out. Um, but they're just not good this year. Like uh their their coach, you know, they brought him in. He was supposed to be like some some technician. And bro, I don't know if it's injuries or whatever, but the lineups he puts together, like it looks like he he just throws them shits on a fucking chalkboard and and it comes out. Like, so the the kid from the US, right? Um my my man, he's a center midfielder. Sometimes they'll they'll have m- m- they'll have McKinney out on the right. They play him. Sometimes they'll sub a guy in and they'll put him at right back. He started as a striker like two games ago versus like Wolfsburg and they got beat. I'm like, what the hell is they doing? So <laughs> they're playing in Man City. I know City is just gonna kill them. City is yeah, gonna, it's gonna destroy them. Yeah, City's gonna win. It doesn't even matter that Schalke's home. I don't think. Um... I think City probably win that game three to one, bro. So look, so Man City have won four games in a row, and they've scored fifteen goals in those four games. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Ke- Kevin De Bruyne's back. Raheem Sterling is filthy. He runs like a little bitch, but he's filthy. Um, Sane is filthy. Bernardo Silva filthy. Kun Aguero is like the best Premier League striker that nobody talks about. I mean, like, yeah. Then, the guy is so consistent, bro. And he's he's a midget. He's five foot five. The big, scary Premier League. You know, mm-hmm. you have to be strong and to you know to to play in the Premier League. This nigga is five foot five, one hundred thirty pounds, and he scores twenty goals a year. How does he do it? He is strong though. Like those short dudes, like they got that low center. Yeah, yeah, gravity. yeah. That low center of gravity. So, so it's hard, hard to, to push them off the ball. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's quick as hell. Like the minute you, you, you put your foot in, he's already two steps ahead of you. Like, he wants you to push him. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, Man City is they're a scary team right now. So I don't really say this as a knock on Schalke so much as Man City's on a on a tear. Um, so I think they will, you know, go through that leg pretty easily. Mm. Who who do you think is um is Man City's best player? Man City's best player? Yeah. Right now, I would probably have to say it's Bernardo Silva. Bernardo yeah. Silva, right? Yeah, he he's he's very the best low key. Right very low key, but that man does work, bro. Yo, that that right wing is locked down because of Bernardo Silva. Yeah, and then you put him in even in the middle when Davis when he when he's playing for David Silva, and yeah. he's amazing there too. So, 
he's a versatile player. He's a great player. I mean, I think he's the best right now. And then that, the fact you got De Bruyne coming back, um, I wish Liverpool had a larger lead on the Champions. Yeah, in the, in the I know you're league. nervous. I know you're nervous. Well, they don't even have a lead. It's tied right now, but they do it's have a tied, game in yeah. hand. But right. I wish that was, you know, like seven points with a game in hand. <laughs> Well, so so basically, so we we both think that Liverpool is is, is gonna is gonna go in the in um, the second leg and beat Bayern Munich. We both got Barcelona. We both got Juve, and we both got Man City. So pretty much, you know, we're cousins. We're family. Look, we're fucking on the same page. <laughs> it's literally everything. Um, so uh, we we could we could talk real quick about the other Europe League. Europa. Um, is there any games that you're like looking forward to from from Europa? I think it's Wednesday and Thursday. Well, yeah, like, I think tomorrow we got Sevilla-Lazio. Yes, yeah, Sevilla-Lazio. That should be an interesting little little game right there. I mean... Um, I, I think that game I think I'll be most interested in, and I, I'm interested in, in the Napoli, Napoli game. Um... For sure, and I guess Chelsea too. Just cause Chelsea, right? The, just to see what's going, going on. on with them. What is going on with Chelsea? Tell yeah. me what what do what do you think? What do you like? You know, you've been you've been a coach and shit. Like, what do you think is going on with Chelsea? Because everybody has something to say, but nobody knows the the fucking answer. I don't even know, man. It's like, who is it at Fuck Chelsea? It. You don't know the answer either. You yeah. wish I might even have you on this podcast. <laughs> You're horrible. <laughs> no, nah, but like Chelsea is uh, they're they're a team that um. They're an anomaly as well. Like they they suck and then they win. Right. They suck and then they win. So like who it's I think it's entirely the players. It's it's them. I think Chelsea needs to get rid of everybody. They has I know Hazard's amazing. Yes, whatever. He's gotta go. Get rid of Hazard. Get rid of everybody on that team and just bring in completely new guys. That's what I think needs to happen. Cause it, it, everything has changed at Chelsea except the players and the board. So the board's not going anywhere. Right. So you got to get rid of the players because you're changing coach. You're bringing in world class coaches every fucking two seasons, and you're firing them after one year. Like what, Jose? What are your expectations? Sorry. Even like, uh, yeah, yeah, like win the league or you're fired, and then you actually fire them. Like, damn. I like, mean. Cost- to- Conte won the fucking league. I know he was talking all that shit. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah, he did win the league, though, right? Like He won the fucking league, so I feel like he can talk his shit. He won the league despite what you were giving him. Right. And yet, Chelsea was like, well, you won. And so that's how Chelsea's board feels. Like, well, you won the league, so clearly you don't need anything. So. Then they get him no fucking players, and then they, they, get, they became trash. Yeah. But, then inju- but then injuries happen, and then, well, well, what if, like, Hazard goes through, like, a little spell of, like, five or six games where he's not amazing? Right. You know, then shit happens, and then you—that's why you need, you know, that's why you need the board to come in and give you support and buy you players to to fill in those voids. I mean, to me, they're just too slow, bro. They just slow. Yeah, they're, they're really slow. Like it's—I don't crazy. know who they've brought in, like even recently. Like who have they even brought in? Like, like that's what I'm. I mean, yo, see, the thing with Chelsea is they're weird because if you look at the books, bro, Chelsea has the best team ever created dog they have 40 current players out on loan right now just on loan 40 guys you know and 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 that list of guys is is legit they're chelsea like matter of fact kurt 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 zuma is the chelsea player you know and he's killing it for for everton i fucking hope that they let let us buy him at the end of the season but you know (laughs) if they just gave some of those guys a, a chance Instead of, you know, you got Pedro. How old is Pedro? Like, you got, you know, you got fucking Cahill is still back there. You know, uh, Azpilicueta, uh, Azpilicueta is slow as shit. Um, Marco Alonso, like, he's slow as shit. He's good going forward. But defending, uh, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot to be desired with that with that Chelsea team. They just brought in G- Gonzalo Higuain to try to get that target forward because Olivier Giroud is whack. They sold Murata. They didn't want um, Michi Bashuai. You know, like what the fuck is going on over there? I don't even know. I mean, one thing I can say though is I think Sarri is, is a really good coach. I think that dude is knows his shit. I mean, look what he did at Napoli. Right. Um, 
also love that the dude always has a, a bogey in his mouth. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, matter of fact, sorry, bro. he um he they they had to tell him you can't you can't smoke on the field in in the Premier League, right? Because I think when when he was coaching for for Napoli, he would light up heaters back to back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They had a little um little box for him to go in there smoke his cigarettes. <laughs> to go hit his bogey real quick and then go back out. He's stressed, bro. He was stressed. He's like this fucking job. He, yeah. he he's like, We're having the best season Napoli has ever had and we still can't win the league. Yeah, it's I mean, yeah. But sorry he's good, man. He they, they gotta give him time. This is only his first year, and they're already talking about firing the guy, like Give me a break. <laughs> I think also the real problem is that they don't got Christian Pulisic. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they put Pulisic in the team. Like, my oh, boy. Yeah. They, well, they do have him for next year. So they have him for next year. Yeah. We'll, like, we'll see, see what that, what that, what the, the young chosen one can, um, can the goat, the American goat. That's yeah. my fucking dude. So, what, but matter of fact, let, let's talk about Pulisic a little bit. Mm-hmm. What do you think is uh, is is going on like with, with him and, and, and Jaden Sancho? Do you think that Sancho is just the the better player, or do you think that you know Dortmund are kind of like we're already selling you? You know, we're gonna develop San, San, uh, Sancho a little more. Um, I think it's I think it's a little bit of both, to be honest with both? you. Because yeah. I think even before the whole Pulisic thing, uh, Pulisic thing, um. Sancho was getting was already getting burned. I mean, yeah. Sancho's nice. He's a young. He's young too. Um, he's like he's like seven. He's like eighteen, right? Yeah. 19. So I think um, the fact that he's so young and showing so much promise, I think that that alone makes them have to go with with Sancho. Even if he wasn't, you know, his wasn't performing as good as well as Pulisic at that young age to be putting together those performances. You gotta you gotta reward that and you know promote that with with um you know starts and letting the guy play yeah so i think it's yeah i think it's a little bit of both you know it's smart to phase out somebody that they've already capitalized their investment on and start maximizing their newest investment because mm. sancho's going let me tell you he's he's not going to stay there it's it's crazy that city actually sold him too like yeah. I, I definitely didn't think that you know if he's such a prospect like that he's and and he's a he's, he's a british kid too like Mm-hmm. You know, but I, whatever. Well, that he probably got a yeah. hundred in the pipeline anyway. I read actually something today on Klopp um, commenting on Sancho and saying that City wouldn't sell them to Liverpool. Liverpool were in for Sancho, and Liverpool um, City wouldn't sell him. Yeah, they're like, so, we're not selling him in our own league, nah, so he can kill us. But then he also commented that that. Because City doesn't sell to to these to British teams like that, but uh, but Dortmund doesn't do that. So uh, I think he he's making a hint for us. Hopefully, one one other Europa game that I do what I'm gonna be looking for selfishly because as a United States uh, men's national team fan, Valencia versus Celtic. My boy Tim Weah have um have you been seeing like what what Tim Weah is doing over there in Scotland? Not at all. But oh um, really? Yeah, to be honest with you, not not in the least bit. So so pr- so pretty much already, Tim Weah has become like a, a cult fi- figure o- over there in uh, in Scotland. He's on he's on loan at at C- Celtic. You know the best. Mm-hmm. The Devon Rangers are basically you know the only team. Um, so Celtic had had a, a lot a lot of injuries up front, so they loaned him from PSG. They got him. I think he scored in his first two games. Um. And uh, more recently, he he's he's been coming off the, off the bench and um really creating chances and like they literally fucking love this kid. Like, if you go on Twitter, all of the Celtic like promotions and all of that stuff and like little videos, Tim Weah is everywhere and he's not yeah. even their player. He's a he's a low knee. Oh man, that's <laughs> awesome. You know, but yeah, he's and a matter of fact, uh, the other day he he got a he got a card. Cause um there was some dude from the other team like when he came in he he was being real chippy with him he was talking shit and he was clipping him so I guess a uh, a Celtic scored like a a eighty seventh minute goal you know to to win the game and then like afterwards like Tim Weah was was chirping with him like basically in his face grabbing his jersey on some yeah yeah what he was talking that shit to Celtic <laughs> baby like you know and and that that meme throughout um uh U S national uh, team Twitter. Just like when everywhere, everybody was like, yo, 
<laughs> Timmy made us so proud, man. <laughs> Shout out to Tim Weah. His his pos was official, yo. He he looked like he's a real player, man. Um, hopefully he can keep doing you know doing his thing at uh at Celtic. Hopefully he starts. Yes. Um, in Valencia, he, he's definitely gonna gonna come off the bench because they use him as like a uh, change of pace. Um, just his speed, bro. His speed and his technical ability. Mm. He's dangerous. I'm pretty um, sure his pops was uh, won Ballon d'Or. Was the only African player to ever win Ballon d'Or. George Way, I think so. Yeah, and think and so. now and now he's the president of Liberia. <laughs> Dead ass. He's his father is the president of Liberia. Shout out <laughs> to the Way family. Shout out to the Way is man. Um, all right, so uh, I guess we damn yo, we already been doing this for an hour, man. Um, this is dope. We uh, um, we actually gonna wrap it up, but uh, I'm gonna ask you one thing. Do you give any fucks about CONCACAF Champions League tonight, or... Because um, I know you're, a, like, a Premier League snobbist and shit. You refuse to watch MLS and all of that shit. So do you give a shit, or...? Um, I, I want to. <laughs> don't tell me I want to give a shit, but I, I don't. But I don't. you don't? I, I Why? Why don't I don't you? know. It's just, I, I've tried. I've tried several times. It's It's tough. So, so, <laughs> so you you trying to convert me to Liverpool is like me trying to convert you to a major league soccer fan. Ooh, okay. I see now. I see where the struggle is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see where the like, struggle is. Like now. that's oh. what it is. Like I I want you to so bad, and you want me to so bad, but we're both so ingrained, like you know, with our hard headedness and shit, and we're definitely family for that. Um, but <laughs> yes. yes. CONCACAF Champions League is is starting tonight. Uh, the the Houston Dynamo play tonight. Um, Tor- Toronto FC play tonight, but they don't have Giovinco. I don't I don't know if you know or not. They sold him to like a Saudi Arabian team for like seven million dollars. Giovinco getting paid now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he went over there, yo. But like Saudi Arabia is buying up like a lot of these players, and they're just giving them crazy crazy money to play in Saudi Arabia, bro. That's crazy. No, reason. like how just... how much. How much money would they have to give you to play in fucking Saudi Arabia? Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure that there's an amount for sure, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he said there's an amount for sure. What it is, I can't exactly yeah. tell you. Well, honestly, probably whatever Joe Vinko is making, because I'm sure he's getting, he's probably getting paid more than Messi. Yeah, he's so really so I think I think last year in Major League Soccer, I think he was getting paid seven point two mil uh, seven point two million dollars, oh. which which was which was the highest in Major League Soccer, and um they didn't uh, resign him, and that's the reason they sold him because they wanted uh, to to drop the wage bill and shit. They wanted to spend money on other players, yeah. so they sold so they sold Giovinco, and then they didn't bring anybody in except Terrence Boyd, uh you know a fucking United States uh, national. <laughs> Team reject. He's he's one of those German Americans that um, Jurgen Klinsmann brought in. Oh, one of those guys. Yeah, so mad people are like talking shit. Supposedly they're they're in um for a guy playing in Belgium, but I don't know. Toronto's probably gonna lose. I definitely think Houston is is gonna uh, win that game. Yo, it's gonna be on the Spanish channels, man. If you're not doing nothing tonight, you know, check in, man. Watch watch your hometown, you know, teams, man. The fuck? Can't yeah, believe you like Major League Soccer. Maybe I'll, I'll check it out, but um, I got some I got some stuff on my Netflix queue that that, <laughs> that sounds more more interesting. Yo, speaking <laughs> of Netflix, something that we both love. Yo, you heard they canceled the Punisher, right? Yeah, I bro. Know. What happened? Why they do that? Because um, ah, uh, Disney Disney Plus is gonna yeah. pick up all this shit. Fucking so. Disney, bro. They got everything now. They are gonna have all the all the um the Avengers shits. Mm. I mean, it's gonna be dope Spider-Man's. though. So. I mean, bro, are are you watching uh are you watching Disney Plus? Are you paying extra money to, to watch that? Uh it depends how much it is. But... <laughs> it's probably gonna be like like ten a month. Yeah, I'll probably pay that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it depends what they got. I hear they're gonna get like I hear they're getting they're doing Star Wars um series. Like they're doing like Loki series, they're doing a bunch of shit. So that all so, sounds right up my alley. To be honest. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So then what? So what we gonna do is you're gonna get it, and then you're gonna give me your your password, just like you have my uh, my NBC Gold password. That sounds like a plan. 
All right, bet. We steal it, baby. This is what we do around here. Yeah, fuck you, Disney. Podcast. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. But yeah, man. So, yo, you know, we're actually literally right at the hour mark. Um, yo, I, I just want to thank you, fam, for you know for joining me today and shooting the shit, you know, all the way in Chicago. Um, so I hope, I hope you have fun. I hope you have fun, and we definitely gonna do this again, man. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. It was uh, it was great, great talking some footy, and yeah, I'll be. Glad to come back and talk some more. All right, fam. So, yo, I'm uh, I'm going to chop this shit up tonight, and I'm going to put it out on Twitter and, uh, and YouTube for the people to hear, man. So, yo, it's your boy E signing out. You know what I mean? My, my cousin Bijan is over here. Appreciate you, bro. And uh, we out, man. Smoke right, on. Peace and love, everyone. High Press Podcast, bitch.